Ladies and gents, hello and welcome to ROG Pulse, the weekly show where we dive into all things tech and gaming. My name is Jake Kalinske and joining me once again, Whitson. What's good, my friend? Nothing. I finally feel like I've caught up on rest after last week's just mm. nonstop streaming here on the ROG Twitch channel. It was and a busy we, week. We were streaming so much AMD stuff. Yeah. We didn't even get a chance to talk about Intel. Get the pivot, All this pivot. stuff just started happening at once and it's like... Wow, what a time to be a PC builder, right? I know. Everybody wants to one-up each other. We had AMD, we had NVIDIA, and then Intel was the third of the of the trio, the holy trinity of, of technology to come out and give us some news on the Z790 motherboards and the Intel 13th gen Raptor-like CPU. So we'll yeah. be diving into that today. But, you know, we'll get into some other gaming news in the traditional Pulse fashion where we just kind of catch up. And gr granted, there's a lot of Pulse news. We are gaming news. We didn't talk about a Pulse that we're just going to kind of skip over because it's like old news at this point. We'll go over the newer the newer things that have happened in the last yeah. week. There's only so. so much gaming news we can cover in in one show when the, can't like catch up for like three weeks yeah man when when life is is as busy as it is but you know with all the chaos of everything else what's new with you any any new games on the horizon that you're or any games that you're playing right now that you're i'm at this really into? tough time of the year man where like i've got you know we've got this taiwan trip coming up and then i'm out of town for thanksgiving and i'm out of town for christmas and i'm always like scared to start like big games before because yep. i know i'm not gonna play a, a ton on vacation and so it's hard for me to like i have a list of games i want to go back to or go go visit but just don't know so i'm fit i've got one mission left in hitman one and then i don't know we'll see what's what mm. maybe, I'll, maybe i'll play some stuff portably on the way to taiwan i've got my flow x13 here i don't know we'll just see but i'm 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 letting the games come to me yeah that's the way to do it <laughs> You know, I think uh, Overwatch 2 just dropped. We'll talk about that. I Neither of us had a chance to try it. I know you're a big Overwatch fan. I'm a big, big Blizzard fan in, in general. So, um, but, you know, for me, it's just been squeezing in some some classic WoW. Wrath of the Lich King came out. I can't believe that Dragons, the, the new retail expansion, is coming out on November 28th. It's just like you just dropped the classic expansion and now you have retail expansion coming yeah. out two months after not seems. to mention overwatch too like they're just dropping everything right it's now. it's a little cannibalistic of of your audience because a lot is of blizzard, it a, a lot of blizzard fans only play blizzard games that is like definitely a thing there are people that right. primarily or only play blizzard games and i don't know if those fans but do exist. they play a bunch of blizzard games or do they just play like well, one blizzard game there's, because that's there's, a thing about most blizzard games is that a lot of those are the types of games that most people would just play that thing like most mm. overwatch players are just overwatch all the time most wow players are wow all the time maybe a little starcraft i don't know but there's a lot of wow players that'll play both versions of wow when you have classic yeah, that, and retail that does so a two a month game. difference there because there's people that want to at least level the character and get the experience they might not raid in both although i know people that do that um, anyways, it's it's just one of those things. We'll we'll talk about that more in our, our gaming news segment. But yeah, life's a bit crazy. Um, you know, the, the channel's been a little little inconsistent, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're getting a good episode of Pulsing today. And I think Lucky's gonna stream on Friday. Lucky's I know she's streaming Friday. She got Marvel set up today so that she can do giveaways. Oh sweet. Yeah, so that's she's that's good. Already doing better than I did. I was like, <laughs> no marbles. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I don't wanna. I know she was testing it, so I, I think we're we're pretty much um, good on that front. But yeah, um, cool. Well, we can just jump right in to talk about yeah, the dude. Intel 13th I'm Gen. Because, I know you've been waiting for this for a long time. Well, I've been team blue. I wore this blue jacket today for a reason for for a long time. Personally, mm -hmm. love AMD. My current system is AMD. But I always just kind of like Intel was my first and I just always enjoyed it. And I'm one person that when I find a sandwich I like at a restaurant, I order that Dude, sandwich that's me too. every time. That's who I am. Right. <laughs> and Intel has always been good to me. I, I went out of my way to try AMD this generation. No, no problems with it. No complaints. I just want to go home. Well, what Intel really like like AMD started kicking major butt and now intel is kicking their own major butt and we've got two butt kicking cpu manufacturers it's a great time to making be awesome right. stuff so team red team blue can't team go green. too wrong i mean in, in, i Intel's... couldn't decide so i just actually have one machine of each Pro <laughs> problem solved i'm actually debating retaining this pc i was gonna sell some of the components but i'm like should i just have a red and blue like one of each you I gotta know. make the aura sync lights red on one and blue on the oh, other oh man okay 
Okay. Like Pokemon Red and Blue. Uh, that's it. Link them up in battle. Blastoise, easy. Um, <laughs> that would actually be a dope aesthetic for a PC build. Just like yeah, I don't know. But anyways, we can we can jump on in and and just start talking about yeah. This next so generation let's pull, of Intel. pull this up. So we, I think I, I sent you a little chart that uh, Intel showed off. Here's 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 the lineup. <laughs> so right there. Intel uh, Intel released uh, six star, six new unlocked processors to start off. Um, the 13th gen lineup. There are going to be more, but this is kind of the start of it. These are all unlocks. You can overclock any of these. Uh, and the main difference is that you've got two i9s, two i7s, two i5s, one each with and without um, integrated graphics. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 actually not even as overwhelming as it looks when you kind of break it down. Right, um, and, and you're looking at very minor price point differences, like 589 versus 564. Yeah. And that's for just whether or not you want that integrated graphics. Where I think we talked about this a little bit offline where you're we like, well, it's just if if for whatever reason your GPU is having an issue, having the fail ba the fallback of integrated graphics yeah. in the CPU is like a nice to have. It but... is a nice to have. And especially, man, at that price, that's a pretty small difference. In, it's so in minimal. Price. I would I would just want it. I like, would probably go for the integrated graphics. I actually don't have integrated graphics on either of these machines. And I've had a couple times where I mm. wish that I did. Um, just, yeah, because if something's wrong with the GPU, if you're selling your GPU and buying a new one, but there's a little bit of a gap there, things like that, it is handy to have just so you can still use your computer. And if there was a bigger gap in price, I would be more on the fence. Um, because I do love me some price to performance, but yeah, yeah. So uh, on the top end here, we've got the i nines, which uh, so the core count on all of these has gone up, which is just insane. And so we're looking at twenty four cores, thirty two threads on this top end i nine. That's eight uh, eight p cores and sixteen efficiency cores. Uh, cache has gone up across the board. We're up to five point eight gigahertz max yeah. turbo on the i9 and intel teased six gigahertz uh in 2023 so i am just oh my gosh there's there's i'm very very excited to see how these perform you've got all of the same benefits that you did with 12th gen in terms of you can go with ddr4 or ddr5 uh depending on whether you want to go a little bit more bang for your buck or get yourself set up for the future you've got pcie gen 5.0 for graphics and storage uh on on those motherboards we'll talk about the motherboards in a little bit um, and Intel also kind of teased some better overclocking support across both P cores and E cores this time around, uh, plus XMP 3.0 for RAM and all that good stuff. So whether you are just a gamer looking for excellent performance or you're an overclocker looking to get in and tweak away, Intel has a little bit of something for everyone. Uh, and these are going to be available on October 20th. So very, very soon. It's like kind of scary soon. We're going to be in Taiwan. Um, it's just like happened out of nowhere. But but if everything works out, hopefully we'll my my plan, my hope is to build an Intel i9 and an RTX 40 series PC live on stream sometime in November, December. Sometime. But but we'll see. We'll see. That's uh that's the goal right now. Right, we just, that's uh, we, exciting. There's, there's a lot of pieces to slot in before yeah we achieve that literally goal. we need to get all the pieces <laughs> uh, um but yeah so you know we can just take a look at our, our official website for our motherboard lineup obviously you can't have the new generation of cpus without a new generation of motherboards to go in and maximize that power and this is the rog z790 motherboards um we also have a buying guide we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute go straight yep. to the video yeah dude these motherboards are gorgeous oh just full screen it video game you're not a video game your website but that's okay <laughs> yeah we're love taking, that anime matrix yeah oh. retaining the old aesthetic from the last generation and just leveling everything up again qlash designs you're that's something you're going to expect to get on all the higher end series of our of our motherboards even the qlash is even on that tough board like wow okay so it, tough it's strips. starting to come down the product stack a little bit which is really nice oh because some God. of those q design features are just they're game so changers. nice they are game changers it's so much easier to build with one of those if you guys want to see it in action we, we kind of went through them a little bit in our uh live build last week mm -hmm. but yeah look at these gorgeous gorgeous boards um our boards are looking more and more like armored they have like these more, more steel yes, plates there are a lot on of them like big full cover a lot of that's um like m.2 heat sinks and stuff as well. too. yeah that's so the best part of it and so, it's yeah. yeah you can um, actually see the m.2s here getting pressed down with that that q latch for the m.2 oh, so, so easy nice. to do so nice wow this guy like, has a lot of m.2 boards in his I, that's what i want 
Sign yeah, me up. Um, and so they're functional, but they also have a lot of cool stuff on them. And we'll, we'll look at this in a bit. Some of them have some cool custom lighting and things like that on them, but yep, you're getting the full suite of, uh, you know, you got DDR five on a number of these boards. You got Wi-Fi 60. One of them even has 10 gigabit networking. Um, really? yeah, so we can, we can kind of take a look at these, um, uh, here and yeah, I was just talk about, of... so we've got these six new Intel processors and we've got six new motherboards to go with them. Remember that all uh, 13th gen Intel processors will work on existing 600 series chipset motherboards as well as these new 700 series uh, chipsets as well. So if you already have a motherboard from last gen, you can slot in the CPU and it'll do fine. But um, if you want the absolute best that we currently have to offer, uh, the Z790 boards are gonna be where it's at. On all of these boards, you get, like we said, those Q design features. You get AEMP um, for easier RAM overclocking if your RAM doesn't have XMP profiles. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got AI overclocking, which is amazing. One click, easy, free performance right away. Um, we just got, did a whole guide on this one on our AMD systems where it's did. legitimately just like so easy. And you click get it and near, near optimal performance. The manual yep. overclocking does, does yield out a little bit more performance. If you want to spend like a ton of hours on it. So again, mm -hmm. like I know a lot of builders, we're there, people are talking about in chat, they're like, bang for the buck. That's what they care about. And mm -hmm. AI overclocking is bang for your buck in terms of time, right? Absolutely. It's 90% it's, it's of the way there for like 1% of the work. But if you like to get in there and tweak, we have a ton of features on these boards for you as well. One of the things that I'm excited about for, um, not in terms of necessarily overclocking, but for everyone is the new AI cooling too. Uh, on some of these boards, which is pretty cool, it'll take your uh, your your you know cooler, your air cooler, liquid cooler, and um, uh, kind of run some machine learning stuff to identify the best fan speeds at the best frequencies to minimize noise but keep cooling uh, uh, good without again you having to do a lot of extra work, which is cool. So your PC is just getting better with time, which is it's great. just getting easier to set it up, right? Like yeah. so, there are people who would just I mean, I remember the first computer that I built. I did not do a lot of tweaking in the BIOS. So nope. my fans were just running full bore mm -hmm. like all the time. And I did do manual overclocking and it was kind of, and now it's like, okay, click, click, click. Everything just, it just fixes itself. It optimizes itself, which is beautiful. And if you want to be the enthusiast that does this manually, that's still there we for you. We got toys for right? you, for sure. Um, and, but and Again, like the over for manual overclockers, it's a great time to be a manual overclocker too, because there's there's start we're starting to see a little bit more headroom. We're starting to see new fun toys to play with in terms of optimizing the heck out of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'll be cool. Um, let's start start with the ROG Maximus series. Okay, we'll let's take a look at this Maximus Z790 Extreme. This thing is crazy. So first of all, yes, it's beautiful. You've got an anime matrix. Uh, display on the side there on the IO shield. And then you've actually got this other display on that like full cover, uh, you know, heat sink shield thing down below. Mm -hmm. um, that can actually, that's an OLED panel that can show like system information. What? Uh, and stuff like that, as well as customizable graphics and things. You're talking about the IO shot, right? No, that uh, is here? separate, I believe. Yes. That's actually insane. Okay. Unless, oh no, sorry, the two inch OLED panel is going to be above that, not not that 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 you're pointing gotcha. to. Gotcha. Okay, okay. Above that, above that, the other the other heat sink there. That is a two inch OLED panel um, that can show useful stuff. That's cool. or cool graphics if you want that to be what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so all that is nice. Beautiful motherboards are beautiful, but this would not be a Maximus Extreme if it didn't have superb power delivery uh, for high level overclocking. And in fact, this model comes bundled with the ROG True Voltition Oscilloscope Kit. So you can get real time voltage information if you're doing like pro level overclocking with LN2, wow. or whatever it is that you would like. This is an absolute monster of a board for serious, serious overclockers. Wi Fi 60, two and a half gig Ethernet. 10 gig ethernet and the wi-fi actually comes with this cool feature called intel double connect technologies where it'll connect to two bands simultaneously and it'll prioritize traffic over whichever one is fastest i love that yeah super cool stuff this is like very very uh advanced <laughs> disregard important system messages show memes on their motherboard instead yeah you can do that <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what it's for um so yes you've got like this is the most beautiful motherboard ever and 
functionality wise, you've got some really, really nice high end stuff in there. Yeah. If you are a, a serious overclocking enthusiast, if you are not doing quite that level of overclocking, but you want a board with serious power delivery and, and enough features to, to keep you happy in a tweaker's paradise forever, check out the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero. Uh, this is an ATX, whereas the, the Maximus Extreme was an EATX. So this also has slightly wider case compatibility. You've got a lot of the same, you know, Q design features and this beautiful RGP display on the side. And um, plus, you know, dual Thunderbolt 4, that's really useful. You've got an ESS quad DAC for the front panel connector, so you can get high quality audio coming out of that front headphone jack. Um, lots of ARGB headers. Again, excellent power delivery for overclocking DDR5, PCIe 5.0, mm-hmm. all the goodies that you could want on a nice high end Intel uh, 13th gen motherboard. So those are our two the Maximus. Maximus motherboards. They are for Maximus. Maximus enthusiasts. Max power. Max power. If you get the reference, I'm proud of you. Um, I know Woodson yep. won't. <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. It's an obscure I feel like reference. I should, don't, no, you should but... not. It's an obscure one. But um, it's a specific song from a specific anime, and it is very obscure. Anyways, um, <laughs> so moving on to the strict series, we got the Z790-E Gaming Wi-Fi, which, you know, n- the next tier on the list, I think. Yeah, so the strict boards are like, if you're not like a crazy, they still have nice overclocking features and all that, don't get me wrong. But if you're not like a super crazy overclocking enthusiast that wants everything under the sun, um, this is like, these are solid boards for gaming enthusiasts that maybe want to play with some overclocking they want the features um but but they don't want the absolute top end board with with features that they aren't necessarily going to use right if you're not going to mm. use a bundle to oscilloscope <laughs> then maybe you maybe, just that pri- maybe you don't need that price point yeah me yeah, exactly. wouldn't use it like you know i'd go down the next tier so uh, we've actually got two boards here that are very similar. Um, the Z790E gaming Wi-Fi and the Z790F gaming Wi-Fi. Um, the main difference here is that the E board supports uh, PCIe 5.0 for both graphics and storage, whereas the F board um, does not have PCIe 5.0. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of choose uh, which one you want to go with there, depending on um, the other components you're going to put into the system, how kind of future proof you want it to be. You know, again, we kind of talked about this a little bit last week, but one of the things to consider when you're building this is, is this going to be a machine that I'm going to keep for the long haul, right? And I'm not going to upgrade anything in it until I build a new machine. Or am I going to keep it for the long haul and upgrade things as I go, as PCIe 5.0 drives hit the shelves, as new graphics cards hit the shelves, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Kind of consider if you're the kind of person who builds a PC and then doesn't touch it for five or six years, that's that, uh, you know, why uh, Strix Z790F board might be fine because you're not going to go out and upgrade to PCIe Gen 5.0. You're just going to keep what you bought. If you're like me and you're like always upgrading piece by piece over time, you'll want something a bit more future proof. I don't like the word future proof, but there it is. Future ready, we'll say. Yeah, you're you're just you're preparing for the next thing. Um, stuff that is just on. If the you want to invest into that that next year, if you're content with with using old components and you're not looking for that, then you have other options, right? And it's not like PCIe 4.0 isn't still great. I'm is, I yeah. still I I'll admit I'm still not even running PCIe 4.0 yet, just because. I haven't upgraded my drive. I'm waiting for 5.0. I'm waiting for direct storage to really kick I think, in. I think I actually manually downgraded to 3.0 because Why? I was having oh. some weird, weird issues forever ago. I don't think I ever changed that. No, I must have changed it by now because I did a full re- re- reinstall. Anyways. I was going to say, that was probably <laughs> back when you realized your power supply wasn't enough to yeah. handle your sweet, sweet rig. Mm. Uh, Which is a comment we've seen in chat. Will I need a 1500-watt PSU? For a whole new generation PC. And we've been talking about this a little bit over the last couple of weeks. And the, the general consensus seems to be no. Um, I, thousand... I would I would say this is my answer. I'm going to cut you off because my answer is just wait. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have more specific info about that soon as some of these products actually come out. And as we finalize a lot of our recommended specs for things like the NVIDIA 4000 series or 40 series. Um We'll have more information in terms of what is required and what's recommended. Mm. Um, and a lot of that has to do with, with, you know, if you get a power supply that um, maybe can't quite 
isn't quite as good at delivering reliable power. Uh, you, you might have to, yeah, you might have to be on the higher end of that. Or if you're like Jake and you have a high-end CPU with your high-end GPU, a lot of gamers can get by with an i5 with their 4080, right? Yeah. So that tips the scales if you, unless you go with an i9 and a 4080. That can tip the scales of your recommended power supply and, and the recommended spec for just one component can't always take into account the whole machine. So we'll be talking about that uh, a little bit more next week. I'm personally leaning towards getting a 1500 watt just because of my last generation 850 <laughs> watt not being enough. And well, and if you're going to get a 4090, that might not be a bad idea. Well, I don't know if I'm getting a 4090, but that might be the case. We'll see. Um, we'll see. Um, so tough uh, don't go to tough gaming. We oh. still have two strict sports, Jake. Oh. I mean, okay. what are you doing? You're, you're right. I'm excited to look at other pretty colors, but here's so, some more pretty boards. I like the the A a lot. This so we can talk about one. the A. So the RG uh, Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi D4. This is, yeah, this is a cool panda color scheme. I love like the ice blue there. Yeah. This is a DDR4 Z790 board. If you don't want to uh, upgrade to DDR5 yet, um, if that's not something that just Again, you're going to build a computer. You're going to leave it like it is. You're not going to upgrade it down the line. Uh, and you're, if you're going to be GPU bound on all your games, and you know you're not really worried about um, the improvements of DDR5, yeah, you can go with DDR4 and save a few but bucks. Think of all the Chrome tabs you could have open. Yep. So the other thing about this is that this is PCIe 5.0 um, for the graphics slot, but the uh, storage is PCIe 4.0. Mm. So again, saving getting, yeah. saving some money there if you're not going to go with the latest and greatest uh, for some of those standards. If all you want is that CPU power and everything else you're fine with, there you go. Again, DDR4 is still good. PCI 4.0 is still good. But you won't have the latest and greatest in a couple of years when those are feeling longer in the tooth. And then, finally, we have the ROG Strix Z790i gaming Wi-Fi, which is my beloved mini ITX form factor. It's uh, so small. It's so tiny. Uh, this, God, I'm just so impressed with our ITX boards. As of late, we've been able to cram so much high-end hardware into one tiny motherboard. Um, this is cool. So this, again, this has DDR5. We're talking high-end features here. The PCIe 5.0 is a little bit interesting on this one. You can either go full bandwidth PCIe 5.0 for graphics, or more likely what you'll want to do is go um, PCIe 5.0 X8 for your graphics and uh, share that bandwidth with the M.2 storage. So um, you don't have full bandwidth PCIe 5.0 X16 graphics. If you want to have PCIe 5.0 storage, you can choose to split it between them or give it all to the graphics. Um, so depending on what graphics cards you have, if you're not saturating that bandwidth, mm -hmm. give it to the storage. Get a little bit more speed there. This also comes with the ROG uh, Strix Hive, which was that um, separate... Uh, unit that we, uh, I don't know if there's a picture of it. There's a picture of it in the article if you go to the buying guide um, or if you just, you know, Google it. Uh, this is that little standalone unit that plugs into the the mini ITX motherboard and, and adds some features that we couldn't quite, the couldn't quite fit on the board, but we still want to offer those high-end features. Um, so you can get like an onboard, an external DAC for really high quality audio with with like optical audio out and stuff. Um, you get a USB-C port. You get the QLED diagnostic uh, screen for troubleshooting. It'll give you the code if you, if you don't know what's going wrong. We have a dedicated AIOC button on the external box, which is super cool. Further down, Jake. Keep scrolling. I'm, I'm looking at all the pretty pictures <laughs> one at a time. Um, so yeah, this is just a really cool feature that I'm glad that we added to our mini ITX motherboards because it it, it means that even if you go small, like I like to go small, um, you still get a lot of those high-end features through that that external box, which is nice. Um, We're getting there. We're getting I, there. I'm I'm not been keeping up with chat, so I'm checking to see if they're. <laughs> well, one any thing questions. I can I can I can answer to chat is um, pricing availability. We we rarely we rarely get to unveil that on Pulse, and we I still. Think, I think these. I think some of these might already be on Newegg the... for. We'll check. Pre, not out of pre-purchase or, or like notifications. These uh, they don't always have pricing on that when you do. So that, not all of the, I I checked earlier. Um, I, I I know at least some of them are up. Okay. Or pre-order. This is what you want to look at, right? Yeah, that's the ROG Strix Hive. It's got that big old volume knob. I love this thing. I want one. It's a really cool idea. Um, be so interesting you, to see how. The if you guys is. are interested in these, go check them out. Uh, on Newegg, at least I know some of these, if not all of them, are up for pre-order. 
Strix Z790. So yeah, it might not be all of them. If I just search Strix Z790, I only see one board. The the we've got the the Hero the with uh the Wi-Fi 6E Hero Maxima Z790 Hero 629.99. The Z790E is 4.99. The Tough is 2.89. So that's you know like your good I think average gamer approach like the it's like the you value build PC, yeah. you're, you're looking at the the top being having a, pretty much all the features for next generation i'd say that's like a yeah like a like a like a high value build mm-hmm. not like a va- va- prime is like the value motherboard prime is the yeah yeah but you're, you're gonna lose a few features i think um yeah, yeah you, it's it, it as it goes down the product stack you kind of you lose out on some of the features and and you get um you know just less of the the really nice stuff. Mm. Um, so, so yes, not all the motherboards are here right now. So you see like the, the ITX board is not on this list at the moment. Um, but check back. Again, these are coming out real soon. So you should start to see them kind of pop up. Yeah. Um, and you'll get pricing for for everything. Remember that, again, uh, the Maximus, those are going to be the most expensive. Then yeah, Strix. This, this is the one I want. And then Tough. This guy. So I actually did. I, made, I didn't put the Tough board in my notes here because I'm just... An okay. idiot. Um, but we can take a look at that too, since I know people will be interested. This is an ROG channel, not a tough channel. This but is true. I know you guys like the tough boards. So I mean we can just take we'll a look at it live. Right? Tough we'll do has it been live. gaining a lot of uh, a lot of people's attention. I think it's a dude, you know, I a, love the aesthetic of the tough motherboards. Yeah, they it's, look it's, so good. I mean, we can just take a look at it, right? because tough is is definitely um, you know, they built their brand around this kind of sense of ruggedness almost and uh, definitely yep. a different aesthetic as a whole. They redid the, the logo even last year. I think the new logo is way better. I love the new logo. Um, yeah. So this is an ATX board. You've got DDR4, uh, no PCIe Gen 5.0 on the storage. So again, like you're, you're, it's, it's bang for the buck. You're saving some money, but you're not getting all of those higher end features that are that are ready for the future. So it's up to you. You gotta gotta kinda balance what um the features you want with the with the budget that you have. But these boards are great. They're durable. You know, they're all tested heavily to make sure that they stand the test of time. It's got the AI cooling too, so you still got some of those nice software features in there. There is not an Asus Tough Twitch channel. No, no. there's no no. Uh <laughs> there is so the way that it's split up is like ROG is kind of its own brand. Um, we are like, it's, it's an Asus brand, but you don't see Asus on, um, ROG products anymore. If you've noticed, like they are, ROG used to, monitors used to, buy, used to have Asus. Yeah, exactly. Asus and now it's, on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And so it used to be like kind of a sub brand. Now it's kind of its own brand. You know, it's like, uh, I'm trying to think of like a good car analogy, right? Like, uh, but I cannot never remember who owns what, like Toyota and Lexus. Like, is that the right example? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> like ROG is like the Lexus and Asus is like the, you know, so tough is the Asus kind of gaming sub brand there. And it's, it's kind of funny because like, I mean, just using your analogy, I, there's a new line of cars that Hyundai makes called Ionic and I could see Ionic, I love becoming, the Ionic. becoming its own brand beyond Hyundai, but that's. It's currently not. The I state. wish they would name the Ionics less confusingly. Well, they're just numbers, which is super boring. Ionic which one, two, three, four, which five, six. Which would make six, sense like, if it was the same car, but it's not because the original Ionic, dude, the Hyundai Ionic, was like a like a normal car, and then the Ionic Five was an SUV, and now the Ionic Six is going to be like almost like a sports car. When originally well, it was like a Prius. Like, but, but yeah, but the Ionic like Four is a hybrid, and the Five is an EV SUV, and the Six is it's like confusing a Tesla SUV. because it sounds yeah. like they're sequential, the same it's, car, but they're not. It's not. Um, it is. I agree. Anyway, it's but yes. Yeah, so this, that's it. So if you want more <laughs> tough content, we do cover the tough gaming stuff a little bit on this channel, but you'll find a lot of that on um, the Asus YouTube channels, the Asus PC DIY group over where JJ does a lot of his stuff. Mm-hmm. You'll find maybe a little bit more tough coverage over there as well, but we we still touch on it yeah. here because we know that it's. It's the same market. Um, yeah, every once wins. in a while we'll talk about Prime. Prime being the next tier. I mean, this is sequential, top to bottom. Maximus, yep. Strix, and Tough, Prime is Prime, Prime is just motherboard. That's not even a gaming brand. Like that's right. just the it's, Asus. It'll do the job if you're yep. like on a budget and you're. And this is your first PC and you say I want this next gen Intel. I want an i5. Uh, I want a Prime motherboard. I want to build a PC as cost effectively as possible. It's going to do the job. It's not going to be as glorious or as as. I, I kind of like the look of it though. I do it's too. This, like, no, 
the Tron branding, aesthetic, it's it, cool. It's, like the it's, uh, Frank has gotten a, 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 a kick in the pants in terms of uh, let's just aesthetics too. Like this is this looks really nice, even compared to last gen. Great. It's like been yeah. upgraded. Well, this feels like you know this is ASUS's top end board. It feels ASUS to me, like ASUS is modern yeah. modern aesthetic because yeah, ASUS yeah. has a different brand identity than than TUF or ROG, and then Pro Art. Coming, coming soon, soon. <laughs> um you know pro yeah, no pro art boards to announce yet but the, the creator enthusiast if if we had a board here then the pro art um, boards are also very pretty they are pretty very they tend to be i mean if we look at the the, the current um amd boards they're black and gold and they've got a totally different aesthetic to them there are no uggos in this motherboard no, lineup we don't i'll, make I'll say things. that <laughs> um okay who's, who's the board for you do you you're into the the mini Oh, I don't know. So, I mean, if we're going by the PCs that I currently have in my house, my Intel machine is the mini ITX. My my AMD machine is the ATX. So I currently have a the Dark Hero in my AMD machine. So like the Hero board, I like the Hero boards a lot. If I were going to... The next motherboard I buy will probably be for that Intel machine. Um, and if I stick with Intel... Yeah, it would be something like this Z790i gaming Wi-Fi because that thing is just a beast. And that's going to be that would be a huge upgrade over what I have now. Yeah, yeah. Now you're like, but I don't know if I'm, if that machine is, if it's time to upgrade it yet. That's fair. That's fair. a lot more work to upgrade that machine than it is my other ones. <laughs> yeah. But Not it's like, build that I have a ninth an gen Intel in there right now, which is like doing okay. okay. Um, but a 13th gen would be a pretty huge bump. <laughs> And yeah, I'd say honestly, the real thing that's holding me back is the TV hmm. because that TV doesn't have VRR. Um, upgrading the CPU isn't going to make a huge difference because I'm locked at 60 frames per second. I got to ask you a personal I do question, 120, how, but it's not VRR. So how often do you personally upgrade your home theater TV? <laughs> well, it depends because the past few years, I, I feel like I've upgraded it three times in the past three years, but I'm probably sticking with this one for a while. Because you part sell, of that, sell and buy, right? You sell I do. Little, I yeah. sell and buy. And part of part of that was because I was I was reviewing a lot of TVs and I was in this like space where I was learning so much about the market that I was kind of trying to find the right one. And when we first moved in, I just like bought something cheap, right? Mm -hmm. And then I finally upgraded that and then to a Sony, and then I upgraded that Sony to a larger version of the same TV. And now I'm done for a while because I'm not I, uh, I'm still on LED. I don't use OLEDs for my home theater. Um, you think there's better motion on LED is what you've told me. For movies. For um, movies, yeah. For games, though, oh, oh, the OLED TVs are better for gaming. And I Definitely. play mostly games in here. So it's one of those things that, like, oh, in the always in the back of my mind, I'm like, should I upgrade you to an OLED? Because yeah. um, I'll tell but, you, God of War is a hell of an experience on these TVs. I and know. I, and I, I I'm... I don't have a home soon. theater PC myself, so I'm only I only really have console games. But um, anyways, I was just amused to to hear your answer there because I know you were always upgrading. Yeah, sorry, that was and... a a rant. <laughs> a, a rant. I uh, we're allowed to rant. It's a podcast. I, I'm I am tempted to to get a new mini ITX board for that machine sometime soon, but then it's gonna also make me want to upgrade the TV to reap the benefits of the new CPU to get that high refresh. So yeah. Well, I'm, if, I, if I'm upgraded, I'm spending a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear you. I hear you. Sometimes you can get Which, decent you know deals, what? but go big or go home, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know that I want larger than my 65 inch. Personally, I like my 65. I'm not going to go bigger than 65 inch. I just mean go big in terms of money spending. Like if I'm going to yeah. upgrade the motherboard, I'm upgrading everything. I know that's kind of how I am. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm thinking for this build. I think the Maximus Z790 Hero is the target for me. The I hero don't... board is such a great sweet spot if you want something high end, but you're yeah. not like a pro overclocker. It's got everything mm -hmm. uh, that most of us high end users are going to want. I love my dark hero. It's awesome. Yeah, exactly. I have a hero myself currently, and um, it just it's the right it's the right position for me. I think aesthetically, I'm really digging this board too. But okay, yeah, it's all nice right. Looking. I've got. I my... love that big ROG logo on the on the heatsink. It does look good. And that's all RGB. You can customize that to be whatever you want. That, you I don't, it off I'm that, you don't I'm want. that one. I don't believe it is. You you can't change that. You can turn it sorry, off. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was talking about the heatsink. I was talking about the other heatsink, the oh, big yeah, ROG yeah. logo. Yes, that one's not on the on the M.2 shield down below. 
Oh, that, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not RGB. But you're right. Yeah, the other one is RGB. Sorry. I'm pretty sure. I guess what I was trying to say is anything that has RGB, you can customize it. You can customize yeah. the aesthetics. Sync it up with right. your Aura other AuraSync peripherals, like your graphics card, your fans. I, I will say the extreme, having this back glow. If yeah, that's actually, it's pretty cool. That's, I like that. I'm, I'm um, into that. It's it it is yeah I know plus that like little OLED screen is yeah, super cool. yeah yeah those I know. are nice little touches it is like the do, bling do I need it stream is pretty <laughs> dope yeah yeah um cool okay well we've got a little bit of 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 gaming talk we can we can jump into unless there's anything else we want to wrap up here for Intel no 13th that gen that was discussion. everything I'm really excited again guys these come out on October 20th keep an mm-hmm. eye on your favorite e Taylor and you will see them start to pop up. Um, you know, the, the last it's thing, exciting. I guess, you know, in terms of like Intel news is we're starting to learn a little bit more about the ARC GPUs. And I got to yeah. say, they they are looking more promising than I expected as a whole. Um, it's going to be a while before, you know, we really get hands on and can really see what they're capable of. Do I expect them to beat NVIDIA in AMD first attempts? No, that would be... Remarkable. But there, there are well, yeah. But the so the GPUs they just released are not also like they're not, you know, forty ninety tier no, products. No. But if you're looking at something like a thirty sixty, that Arc, uh, what is it, the Arc seven seventy that just came out? I didn't like commit all this to memory because uh, we weren't sure, talking. This is yeah. Arcs, this, this say, is, we don't have a ROG card. This is something to, we're still completely inexperienced with, right? We haven't you know had any, yeah. any hands on with this stuff, and it's. But uh, it, it, it is it could be a compelling price to performance option for mm-hmm. that for that tier, especially if you're playing like newer DirectX 12 games mostly, um, because that's where they they tend to excel a bit more. Um, yeah, that's uh, it, I'm glad to see another player in the space. Basically, so I'm gonna be watching with great interest. And you know, I mean, Intel ha- makes great stuff, so you know uh, they're gonna be on their on their game. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. All right, we're gonna shift to gaming news. It is time to officially. Yeah, I just dive threw in. a bunch of stuff in here. I didn't actually like. No, dude. I like looked at the list and I said, "Well, everything I wanted to talk about was here." So thank you. For I doing... I hope you actually know because I don't know anything about Dead Space. So I was hoping you did. Big fan of Dead Space. Um, you know nothing about it. Well, I should. I mean, I, I know it's like a space horror game. That's all I know. Yeah, viewer discretion is advised. So maybe we shouldn't watch. Yeah, this, I hear this, this is gruesome. This trailer. <laughs> I hear this trailer is like super gruesome. <laughs> yeah, you've been warned. Like, if you got kids, you might want to like you know ear, ear, put, put your hands over their eyes, eyes for, for for a second here, just because Dead Space is a pretty brutal um, game, and they're they're remastering it. So I'm I'm really excited to replay this first game. I thought it was incredible. The second one I think was good, and the third one was horrendous, if I remember <laughs> correctly. It's like the series like really just kind of lost what it had going for it. Now, the original creator of, of Dead Space has a new game called Callisto Protocol coming out, which literally is Dead Space 4, but it's just like a re-reboot, essentially. It's 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 a different character, different different worlds technically, but fundamentally it is, it is space horror, and it's made by the same creator. So, Excited for that, but yeah, this is going to be great to to have a, uh, you know, this is horrifying. When does this come out? I don't actually know. Do I actually date? don't know. It might be there might be a date at the end of the trailer. Usually, I do like a full week of Halloween streaming, but I'm going to be in Taiwan, so it's going to be hard to do that. But if I can get some spooky games in for October, November, I will get some spooky games in. Um, the graphics on this look incredible. Yeah, the, it looks great. And you know what? Uh, I'm not generally a big horror fan, but I also didn't think that I would like Doom 2016, and that ended up being one of my favorite games of all time. So it's such a good game, it really is. <laughs> I have been wrong many times before. Gosh, I cannot wait to replay this. I haven't played this game in what 15, 16 years. Probably I was gonna say, when it's it came out, like the franchise is pretty old at this point. Yeah, it's been a it's about minute. time to revitalize. Oh, for sure. Like, you know, I don't even remember the story that well. So the replay will be, uh, it'll be fresh content. Some people really remember games super well. I'm not really someone, I need to replay content to like kind of commit it to memory. That's right. Even I, books. I got to read a book twice to really like remember it. Yep. Yeah. I'm kind it's of the just, same way. It's just how I am. Humanity ends here. Is there Oof. a date? Is there a date? Dead space. January. Okay. Okay. Right, so that's I don't, 
That's Pretty not soon. too far off. Yeah, I don't have to worry about trying to squeeze a Halloween stream in for that, though. Nice. Asian uh, Venom, you haven't played Doom yet? Come Doom, on. You need to get on that. Um, in other gaming news, Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2. Is live as of yesterday. Um, I saw it had like 350,000 viewers on Twitch. That's pretty good. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Very few friends in my friends list were playing it, though. So... Uh, I, I'm I'm excited to play it. It's a very specific group of people of Overwatch fans like me. I think that's what it is. I think <laughs> I think they have to win back some of the more general fans, and then the people that really like shooters and really like Overwatch, because Overwatch had this magical thing where it pulled in everyone. It pulled in people that had never played shooters before. It pulled in MOBA fans. It pulled in FPS fans. It pulled in everyone. And, um, you know, a lot of people have gone back to their genres of choice that they've always kind of played. And Overwatch 2, um, I'm really interested in the new Fox character, the Kitsune girl. She looks cool. I can't wait to try her. But um, I'm just personally kind of surprised there's not really a whole lot of discussion within my friend circle about the game. How about you? Have you have you been hearing much about it? I don't have friends. It's just you, Jake. That's right. That's right. We that's just pay just you to be my right. friend. So, so I've been talking about it quite no, a bit. So you've been hearing you know, a lot about Overwatch. I, uh, I actually have a bunch of friends. Like, I actually, my old work friends are the ones that got me into Overwatch, and I have not been in that Slack for a while. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So I actually don't know. They could be talking about it a lot, and I'm just missing out on all the fun. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just excited to jump in. No play. plans for buying Overwatch two yet. Well. Lucky it's, for you, free to it's play? free to play. Yeah, I'm just play. Uh, they made that is the big change with the game. Is Overwatch used to be a sixty dollars box game, it is now a free to play game with with uh, with it's five v five instead of six v six. It has seasons. it makes more sense as a free to play game. It does. It does. It, you Given know, that it, it's like an esport game that's long term, kind of live servicey, like it well, just makes more sense. I think my whole like gripe with um with hold on, I gotta ban this chatter <laughs> oh my god can i not ban from restream i didn't oh <sighs> hold on fun times yeah I'm, I'm excited but i haven't gotten a chance to play it yet i've just been a little bit behind i still want to play metal hell singer too so got a lot on my list that is i know overwatch 2 will be there when i'm ready so in other news i thought this was awesome that we have a more distinct answer from Sony on how long it's going to take their PS exclusive games to come to PC. They said it'll be at least a year for PS exclusive games, except live service games. Now, at least a year, that's a long time, but you know what? That's good. I to like, have... I like the, I like having an answer and a year is not too bad. I, that was kind of what I was assuming. Me too. You know, they, they said they were releasing uh, miles Morales and that was like, yeah, it was like two years, something like that. I a year is good. A year is really healthy because yeah, you know, tons absolutely. of people don't want to commit to buying a uh, a console, and they can they can just wait. That gives them time to 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 spend. A lot on of people port. wait that long to spend to buy a game anyway. Exactly, because they'll get it for cheaper or something, right? So I think that's really hel- healthy. Um, you know, just having the the confirmation is a big deal, though, because. You know, I'd I'd like them to say twelve to twenty four months, but at the same time, they don't need to give us that promise. At least they're gonna tell us at least a year. So it's not really a surprise. But yep. hey, if you can play God of War Ragnarok in a year, I'll take it. You'll take it. Because otherwise you don't have a PS5, right? Yep, I do not. Sold it. Yeah. Um this was kind of surprising news. This CJ C D Project Red showed off a roadmap, which they announced Multiple new games. A lot of stuff. One of them being a proper sequel to Cyberpunk 2077. So yep. let's just kind of talk about that. Now, Cyberpunk may be the most anticipated game of the decade um, where there was more hype about this game than I can remember anything having. Yeah, I like, can't like either. Ever. You know, maybe like as a kid, so like a Nintendo game coming out, I was pumped up. But like everyone was pumped for Cyberpunk rough launch it, it's been a rocky road they've 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 removed a bunch of features from the game but they they they, they really just kind of went silent patched the game 
made improvements, made improvements. Released a Netflix show that got released, everyone interested in playing the game again. That's the biggest thing. They released, yeah. uh, this is the brilliance. They released Edge Runners, which Absolutely I, haven't, brilliant. I haven't watched, but I my haven't. brothers, I, my, one of my brothers, I have three brothers. One of them just got married this weekend. So the whole family was together and two of them wouldn't shut up about Edge Runners. And one of them had never played Cyberpunk and went out and bought it because of Edge Runners. So, wow. so people um, who weren't like in the know and don't like don't have all the baggage from it just jump in and are but it's probably both, enjoying it's the both. game. You're getting people that may have bought it and, and shelved it because of bugs and like, you know, took time off and never came back. You're getting them invested in the world. And that's such an important thing. We talk about. Yeah. What gives an MMO, um, you know, staying power and you need people to already be invested in the world. And, um, you know, this that's what cyberpunk's always been about. Like the main character of cyberpunk is like Night City. Right. Right. That needs to be the main character. The world needs to be the main character in an open world game like that. Um, so, and so getting people invested in that was a really, yeah, really yeah, smart way I, to get people. I can't wait. And then we got some Witcher spinoffs. Um, Two Witcher but... spinoffs and a new trilogy of Witcher games. So yeah, just I like don't... a ridiculous amount of Witcher content. Netflix, uh, Netflix being the MVP here for CG Project Run, apparently. Because <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? right? Like, very true. Um, and a mystery project that's an entirely new original IP. It sounds like so that'll be interesting to see as well. That's man, they're really investing heavily in the future, though. And I am such a huge fan of the Witcher games. Um, I'm excited to see what what comes next. I should give them a try. Um, I played one for about 30 minutes and I said, Which one? Witcher 3. Okay. That is the best one. Yeah. Witcher 1 and 2 are really good. Witcher 1 is hard to go back to. It has not aged super well, even though the story is still incredible and it's worth playing. You just have to, like, I just. Need go to into go, it knowing that it's going to get better. There was like a, a five year window where I refused to pick up a controller. I said, no, if it's not yeah. good on PC, I will not play it. That game was not good on control. Those on are keyboard. two different things, Jake. Something could be great on PC and also require a controller. And The yeah. Witcher well, 3 is one of the best examples of that. I have accepted that fact and I need to go back and try it on controller because I, in fact, I'd probably want to play it on, on my TV. Rich point. says, do I need to play the first two for three? So here's here's what I would say. I've, I think I've said this before. Um, the Witcher 1 and 2 are great. And if you have time and you want to like really dive in and, and, and get the full story, um, you can definitely play 1 and 2. 1, like I said, is a little bit rough, especially like the first few hours. It does get a little bit better as it goes. And, and the story, I think, is incredible. Um, some great like twists and turns in there. I loved it. I would recommend it. If you don't necessarily... like have the time you want to do it to them. One thing I would recommend, whether you're playing the first few games or not, absolutely go read the first collection of short stories or watch the the series on Netflix because the, the games are not adaptions of the books. The games take place after the books. And because the, the first two games especially were made kind of under the assumption, you kind of know who some of these characters are. Hmm. And so if like when I jumped into the first game, I was like, wait, who are these people? It's not like introducing me to it, the world or it, it was very kind of confusing watching. If you watch the first two seasons of the Netflix show and you go play The Witcher 3, you'll be fine. You'll be totally fine um, because The Witcher 3 does a better job of introducing you to everything, assuming it kind of assumes you haven't necessarily played the first two games, but you'll be much more attached to the story if you know because Siri and Yennefer like two of the main characters in the Witcher three are not even in the Witcher one and two games. So like you could definitely watch the first two seasons of the show, go play the Witcher three. You'll get everything out of it that you need to. The Witcher. Well, Henry Cavill has my attention, so I'll have to watch the show. Um, and then, and then maybe, maybe that'll hook me the way that cyberpunk edge runner is hooking other people to play. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. I, I like the series a lot and it does definitely kind of hook you into the world and, I wish that I had seen the series before I played the third game because I would have been much more attached to to some of the characters that I hadn't like met yet. Mm-hmm. Um, just running through the other news, Stadia, rest in peace, goodbye. Um, I think the big the big thing here is if I uh, one thing I read about Stadia closing down is the controller, yeah, for Stadia needs a Bluetooth update, otherwise it's e waste. It cannot. So it's be not used technically e waste. You can use it wired, I believe. 
but, right, but you can't but use it. Let's, but let's I open know, it up. Exactly. Let's open I it really, up. Like, it, and we got to be critical on, on on Google for that. It's it's a very Google thing to like shut something like this down. But it's also a lot of times I I feel like they would do something like release a Bluetooth update, right? Like just like hey, let's I put hope the so. source code for this update on GitHub or whatever, and let people use their controllers. Yeah, I hope that, so. Like it would not be off brand for Google to do that, and I hope they do. That'd do you be remember, cool. You remember, not uh, that I Google has more failed things they have they released and like didn't didn't maintain do you remember google wave that's my favorite one to bring up jake don't get me started on google wave because i <laughs> loved google wave it okay? was awesome google wave was like slack and teams long before slack and teams were and everyone like jokes about google wave like memed about it for years and i'm like guys google wave it was ended great. up being a real thing so i loved it i also have a weird relationship with google wave because i started I was in college, I, or it was a year after college when Google Wave came out. If and anyone I started, doesn't know what Google Wave is, Google Wave was go look it up. reinventing email. Like, it was going to kill email. Anyways. And I I started my first job out of college at Lifehacker as an intern when Google Wave was releasing their invites, and the hype was just at max level. And we were trying to, like, we had these invite threads every day where people could share invites with each other. And I was in charge of moderating the comments, and it was freaking pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to start your job as an intern comment moderator when Google Wave is launching. Love it. Um, but I also, yeah, I loved it. It was like, it was kind of this weird in-between synchronous and asynchronous chat that was so perfect. It had like threads and stuff long before threads were built into any of these right, chat. Right, things, right, right. It was just so. It was before useful. social media, really. Um, so, social media was around, but not, but not in the way as it is today. As it is yeah. today. yeah. So um, just we are about to do our giveaway. So I, since this is actually the first time we've done a giveaway while co-streaming to YouTube in quite a while, just a friendly reminder that the giveaways only work on Twitch. So if you want to partake, you need to go to twitch.tv slash Asus ROG, join, and then we're going to launch a Marbles on stream session in a moment. You just type exclamation mark play when the session starts, and then your Twitch account will link into that and let you mm -hmm. let you play but it only works through twitch chat because that's how the game works and it's integrated into twitch game pass xbox game pass we got some big updates coming well, lucky disagrees with me and says that you should play the witcher one and two or at least read about them before you play three well so there's that but lucky's <laughs> never right so don't don't listen to her lucky is um, always right <laughs> game pass has some of my favorite games coming to it including valheim and I saw this and thought of you. Yep. Chivalry 2, another game that is very dear to me. Um, those are like two of my favorite land party games. So now they're on Game Pass. Just have to have all my friends have Game Pass and we're good. I That's still have never great. played Chivalry 2 and I kind of want to. So this oh, is perfect. Now oh, I'll get a chance we, to try it out. Yeah, we'll do a co-op stream soon. That's a great... Like, especially with, like, Rings of Power, which, oh, my God, this week's episode, Chef's Kiss. I'm behind. Um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it. It's okay. <laughs> I just say this week's episode was fire for lack of king nemesis words. says where's my wiggle jake here's the wiggle here's the wiggle king nemesis i see i see the the guys coming over from youtube i see some people following um but yeah so you know the walking dead plague requiem uh persona 5 royale i'm actually interested in that royal and, it's not uh, royale i'm pretty sure it's royal royal has an e on the end of it jake you're right i'm just thinking it's battle royale a lot of default. good games yeah a lot of good games coming to game pass right now pretty exciting yeah and Guys, uh, I have to. My monthly reminder: uh, it's that time of of the month where uh, new games are up for free on Twitch Prime. So if you click that little crown icon right up here, uh, you can get. There's a lot of in-game content, skins, and stuff for all your favorite games. But right now, there are a lot of free games, including Middle Earth: Shadow of War. What a what a time to play that with uh, the Rings of Power coming out. And I think Shadow of Mortar was free a couple weeks ago. So. There you go. Total War, Warhammer 2. Oh, my notes. Uh, Loom. Loom is like a game from my childhood. Holy moly. I don't know if any of you guys know Loom. It was one of those old LucasArts point-and-click adventure games, except you used... It was kind of like Ocarina of Time, long before Ocarina of Time. Everything huh. you did was a series, was a song you played on your staff, and so you'd have to either, in the hard mode, you'd have to memorize like the notes, or in like the easier mode, you had like a little songbook, and when you played a song, you could perform different actions, um, and there was this really, really cool story. So, ah, that's really fun to see. I love seeing some of those old classic games come back. Okay, now is the time! Exclamation now mark! Play to join the marble session. The winner of this marbles race will get a twenty dollars voucher to GamesPlanet.com. 
I think Lucky Lucky, do you know what you're gonna stream yet? Don't answer till the play spam is done. Do you know what you're playing on Friday? We can announce it here if you've picked. But I'm uh I'm curious. I left that ball in your court. But there will be no stream tomorrow. Um Yes, no stream tomorrow. Got Jake some, will be gone. But Lucky yeah. will be streaming on Friday. Lucky, do you know what you're streaming yet? I think I know what she's streaming, but I don't know if she's decided yet, so I don't wanna I don't wanna speak for her. When is the promise cooking stream? Hmm. Also a question for Lucky. Hmm. I mean I could You guys don't want to watch me cook. I could I could do it. I'm actually stream. okay. It would just probably be boring. Oh she's committed to Metal Hell Singer. Sweet. <laughs> love it I, I recently learned that Lucky is a fellow metalhead so meant to be uh, yeah I'm gonna have to watch this stream thanks YouTubers for coming over and following yeah yeah for sure this is the cool place to be if you want to get in on the giveaways we also stream more often here um, yeah, some much- of our streams go to YouTube some do not but we're when always things, streaming on Twitch channel all week long. Are nor- yeah, when things are normal, we have three streams a week. Right now, things have not been normal. We've been... I've been all over the place. A lot going on, IRL and here. And we're going to Taiwan soon, so that's going to kind of disrupt yep. the schedule. But we're keeping this, the stream dream alive. All right, I'm going to give you guys 10 more seconds, and I'm going to launch this this uh, this race. We have 111 marbles duking it out for that first place prize. I'm going to be generous and give a prize to last place as well. So first Ooh. and last, two prizes, 20 bucks for each winner. And we send these prizes out about a week late. Um, so next week, it'll it'll likely be Tuesday or Wednesday since I'm taking uh, a long We got to do some digging and make sure y'all aren't multi-accounting. Yeah, we did so, have some bands go out. It's not just a, it's not just a quick send the code and done. Yeah, yeah. All righty. Here we go. My son got a little uh, a little like marble mar- marble running kit where you build those crazy things like like this but in real life and I can't not think of That's marbles great. on stream when he does it. Good luck, have fun. First and last, get the twenty dollar <laughs> prize each. New Rupoga says, "Is it Lucky from MSI? The red dra- is the red dragon mascot named Lucky?" Oh my goodness, is that the name of the dragon? Sorry, Lucky, you got to change your name. Yeah, <laughs> bad. We can't have people being confused about which brand we are. Where are we going? Up I here. want to find them and fight it. It is a tiny dragon. Maybe you could. I I have a, a plushie of it somewhere. My first ever. Why, Jake? My first ever commentary gig. Is it like a voodoo doll? No. <laughs> For you to do bad things to our competitors. It's got a special memory attached to it. Every time he pokes the voodoo doll, a motherboard fails. Just kidding. Oh, no. oh God. That's brutal. <laughs> Pokey. All right. Oh, not Pokey. Puck, Puck dicks. Yeah. I remember Lias has that giant lucky. Tipsy Momo. Rip. All right. All right. So we got P-O-K-D-I-X. You are first place. You need to type in chat. <laughs> I like how you had to spell the name. I, I did pronounce it once. You got to type in chat to claim your win. You do need to be present after the race ends to confirm that you're here. Spawn looks like you might be that last place. Oh, it's man. Don't good. fall off. Okay. Well done. I won. LOL. Congrats. 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 <laughs> and Spawn... 69th place. Nice. Nice. All the DNFs count is did not finish, aka you died. Rip. Spawn. Spawn. I mean, it's. If you're not here. Come on, here. Spawn, where are you? Speak. Speak Ten, now. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You're not here. Mm. Aram P, congrats. You're here. I just saw you type that. It's going to you, Aram P. Congratulations. Um, because you would be the next one. It wasn't nice after all. Um, nope. 
okay. 68th place. 68th Lame. Place. Lame. Well, guys, it was fun hopping on the mic for Pulse again. Um, we'll be doing it again next week. Yeah, yeah. Different time. Wednesday morning, I think. We, we have the our, our uh, another deep dive on the NVIDIA 40 series. So this will be yep. a proper, you know, talking a little bit more in depth on the cards. We've got Romeo joining us once again. But yes, that is going to be a earlier than normal time slot. Also not on the normal day. Typically, this is Thursdays at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. But it's going to be much earlier on Wednesday. So, cool. Be here or be square. GG's, friends. See you Until guys. Until next time. GG's.